Hello friends, welcome to a much cooler, much more pleasant morning here in North Carolina. Um, Jerry and I decided to come out to the cottage garden this morning and do a quick tour of this space and we're taking advantage of much cooler temperatures. It is early Sunday morning. It is happy Father's Day to all of you wonderful men out there. So happy Father's Day. Um, yes, yeah, so we're getting ready to go to church. Jenny was looking fancy today. So I thought, well, hey, let's just kill two birds with one stone and we're going to get out here and do a gar garden tour of our cottage garden because right now it is looking primo and it is looking spectacular of course obviously here we are in north carolina a zone 7b that is um towards the end of june of course had really really hot temperatures as you remember this last week we have a cool spell we're getting ready to go into some more hot temperatures this week everything is popping so this bed we have been in here many times you were with me actually when we planted some of the annuals when i planted the caladiums in the urns earlier last week um, this is a full sun bed we are out here pretty early in the morning so we are in the shade but we're just going to walk through and i'm just going to kind of give you a tour of some of the plants i won't hit every single plant um, but the plants that are really in bloom and looking fantastic right now i'm going to show them to you this cottage garden is where i just have fun i love big bold colors um, this is right along our driveway we can see it from the windows um, when we're inside of the house when i'm washing dishes i see this bed all the time so i really enjoy those big bold pops of color here and it is a mix of annuals and perennials in here so let's just walk through the thing that you're going to notice first probably is the rainbow rhythm daylilies from proven winners i have i think four or five different varieties in here um shalom peony display is a wonderful petite short daylily that's why i have it at the front of the garden completely different bloom than any other daylily Again, it is early in the morning, and so daylilies open and close with the sun, so they are not fully open, but they have that peony-like bloom on them with that nice, soft, kind of a peach color to it. Fantastic. And it is one of the, or I think it might be the actually the first one that does bloom. We also have this huge, bold color of Primal Scream. And Primal Scream rightly gets its name because it grabs your attention right away in the garden. A gorgeous orange that has huge blooms on it. This plant is probably about three years old. It was planted as a one gallon. Clearly it loves this space and is doing wonderful but the Rainbow Rhythm series of daylilies um, are just known for their big, huge blooms on them, like the flower sizes is really large, and of course those gorgeous colors. Another Sloan Peony display. Then we have Ruby Spider back here, and Ruby Spider um, would be my second one that blooms. Nice golden yellow center um, with the burgundy edges on it. Just It just keeps going. These daylilies have been blooming pretty well for a couple of weeks now and they are just going at it uh, also of course i mix some fun annuals in here i have got my uh, senorita rosalita cleome nice big presence that was one plant it was a gallon but i put it in here it's doing great along with of course you got to have the gum freener, right the truthful of pink that is a huge uh, butterfly magnet lots of fun and it pairs really well with this liatris. Liatris is just a classic perennial. Um, it's used a lot in cut flowers. There are two plants here. Mama and I planted this. We thought it would be really fun to put it in front of the birdhouse because it brings some height. It's very spiky. Of course, the beautiful kind of lavender color blooms on it. Big, huge pollinator attractor. So this is a great one along with um, all sorts of other things. Uh, of course, I have to have my salvia in here. I do adore the Rockin' Series salvia. This is Rockin' um, Blue Suede Shoes. Really nice blue. I like to have some different colors in the garden. So this is a wonderful one. The hummingbirds just find it irresistible fantastic and it will get nice and big so i have my annuals i only had a handful but they are dotted throughout the gardens um, so you kind of keep that repetition going throughout the gardens 
coming up the steps on both sides, I have the Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry. That is the new petunia that was introduced this year. I planted them again as gallons. I planted one in each step. By the end of the season, I should have a whole carpet of these guys. They are doing great, wonderful, love that. And then my phlox is getting ready to bloom. This is the um, part of the luminary series. It's great perennial. This is the ultraviolet. And ultraviolet gets nice and tall and it will have really deep, really, I mean, it truly is ultraviolet. It has that big, bold pop of color. And you can see there are buds all over this plant. It has a really nice kind of a sweet smell to it. It is just a great, great plant. Um, and as we're going up, I have, like I, I've always said about these two beds because obviously the steps coming up to the garden boxes divides this garden. Um, this side is a little bit larger than this side. I say that they are sisters. They are not identical twins because they have the same plants that are repeated, but they're not planted exactly balanced, if that makes any sense, right? So I don't have the exact same placement of plants in here as I do in the next one. Now, if you've been around gardening with Creekside for any length of time, you know that I have kind of a, I don't want to say a love-hate relationship because I do love this plant, uh, it, but it does prove a little problematic sometimes. This is a perennial lantana. It's one of the few that are per, like truly perennials for us here in North Carolina. Um, this is Miss Huff, and Miss Huff is a wonderful beautiful beast of a perennial. It is huge. Pollinators just go nuts. I've got a honeybee right here beside of me. Uh, yesterday I saw butterflies really starting to kind of cover this. This again has been in here for three or four years. I really have to keep it in check because it gets massive and I just have to come in here and whack it back. Uh, if you were with me back in the fall, I had talked about, I didn't know if we were going to dig it up, if we were going to leave it. I went ahead and trimmed it back last fall because I did not want to look at brown sticks all winter. Clearly it came back great. Its roots are really extensive, but she's huge. She makes a gorgeous presence. I just have to kind of keep her pruned back because she will overtake this bed. Um, Banana Cream 2 Shasta Daisies are doing great. This is part of the Amazing Daisies series from Proven Winners. Love this plant because your new flowers will come out a really kind of a creamy yellow. And as they mature, they turn to white. So on that plant, it looks like a banana cream pie, right? Nice soft shades of yellow and white together fantastic perennial that just continues to bloom over and over and over again and then we have several of the different nephophias in the flower bed red hot poker i know you know of a red hot poker that's called a nephophia this is part of the pyromania series we've got a beautiful yellow we've got a bold orange in the back lots and lots of fun uh, yeah I think, did we do Nosferatu? I don't think we did that one. So this is another of the Rainbow Rhythm series, um, Daylily. It's a nice kind of a deep purple. Um, it has so shades of purple and it is gonna be my last one that blooms here. Um, so lots of Daylilies, lots of pops of color. And of course I cannot have this, I, I have to have this plant in my cottage garden. This is of course what I'm talking about is the Vermillionaire. Vermillionaire is in my opinion the number one hummingbird plant for us. Hummingbirds just come, they love this plant even though it has little small blooms. It is perfect for the hummingbirds to get in there with their little beaks, suck, suck up all that delicious nectar for them. Um, and the pollinators love it too. I, the first couple of years, you know, I thought hummingbirds. Well, then the bumblebees and the honeybees, they love this plant. When I planted this, I actually put three plants really close together. So by the end of the season, it really will fill up this whole entire area. And of course, I have to have coleus in my flower beds because I do love it. This is the Wicked Witch. Again, we'll get nice and tall. I keep her kind of pinched back so she doesn't get um, too tall and leggy because where we are, if we have storms that come through, this becomes a wind tunnel and I want my plants to be nice and sturdy and not flop over. So she is doing great. Now let's head up here to the garden boxes because you know I've got these five garden boxes up here that I plant my vegetables and my herbs in. Um, 
and I have to say I just did a video just the other day and there were two things that you sweet viewers told me about that I was when I was filming I was completely oblivious to what was going on so come up here and let's talk about those two things that you really helped me out on all right so when we were here and I was planting the caladiums I had to stop for a minute because I found uh, some damage from a tomato hornworm and I wanted to show that to you so we were standing right here and um, I was using just so you know uh, <laughs> I know y'all are probably like looking back at the video you were like Jenny how do you not see those massive hornworms you gotta remember it was hot I was sweaty and I was so focused on making sure that I was getting the uh, footage of the damage and I was looking I was using a GoPro so it has a really tiny little screen so I was just focusing on that and not really paying attention to what was around me uh, but looking back at it after y'all pointed it out I was like duh there they are so what happened is I'm sitting there and I'm talking about the damage from a tomato hornworm and I had one on that I had like taking off a stem and I was showing you that well while I was focusing on the damage lo and behold there were two massive other hornworms right there so there was a total of three I only saw one and then in the comments y'all were like Jenny hello there's two more um, so when I was reading those comments I came right over and I searched high and low on this um, tomato plant I could not find them uh, so a great way to find tomato hornworms is to use a black light flashlight right so I went on to Amazon I was like how fast can I get one here I was it was came the same day that I ordered it so last night Jackson and I were out here after dark with our little black lights looking all over this plant the big ones were gone I could not find them the only one that I found was one little tea tiny little baby on the plant so of course I eliminated that one but I will come back out here and kind of continue to check my tomato plants that's a really common pest like they get all over the place um, I had comments that say that tobacco like so a long time ago when we had massive tobacco farms in the south they would be all over that I have seen them on caliber coas I have seen them on petunias obviously tomatoes they are huge fat worms that will defoliate and eat your plant lickety split yes they do turn into the hummingbird moth um, I just choose if it's eating and devouring my tomato plant I choose to uh, eliminate it because this is my tomato plant and it is eating all of my fruit that I have been working on so that was that a lot of you were asking about where I got these cages from these are from Gardener Supply they are amazing even though we've had wind they have not um, tilted at all and when you've got tomato plants that just continue to grow like this sun gold it is wonderful nice and tight and upright and I have got tons of fruit on these plants so I'm super excited about it I did order some more um, they just came in so I've got three more or two more tomatoes that I need to stake up with those cages but love those so go to gardener supply if you're looking for great tomato cages and then also I ordered back in the fall because I had cucumbers and they were just everywhere so I got this um, kind of trellising system from Gardener Supply and I have two different types of cucumbers that are growing on here this variety is doing a little bit better than the other variety but hey I don't care as long as we have some fresh cucumbers they are doing great super excited about that and then I do have two different kinds of beans growing in here right here is a wonderful green bean it is a bush bean so I don't have to trellis this it is doing great and then the uh, beans from proven winners they are growing right here again very happy plants so excited about that and when we were here you know I was planting my caladiums they are doing fantastic I got the irrigation all hooked up so when the garden boxes run my caladiums also get watered so I was able to, to kind of tuck in the irrigation so you don't see it it's very kind of invisible obviously if you're looking for it you'll see it and then also look at these jalapeno plants y'all they are loaded with fruit I have got jalapenos galore these were plants that I started from seed and they have got some big beautiful peppers on them if you've got some ideas on how I can use peppers in various recipes please share them with me I would love to know 
um, some of your favorite uses for jalapenos other than the obvious, right? Um, but hey, if you've got a favorite recipe of using jalapenos, please let me know. And then the last thing I want to share with you is um, something I was completely unaware of, and it was two viewers that let me know what it was, what was going on. So in this box, I have my carrots, my various carrots, and I had a row of lettuce. One of you sweet people was like, Jenny, you have daughter, are you not worried? And I was like, daughter, what in the world is daughter? Looked it up, Professor Google, by the way. Um, yeah, so it is a very big concern. Daughter is this weed that you see. It is kind of that lightish yellow that is on top of the carrot plants. It has, it is basically, it is a weed. It is part of the Morning Glory series uh, family and it is a parasitic weed. So basically, daughter does not have any leaves on it, but what it does is as it grows, it attaches itself to a host plant, carrots are one of those, and it actually sucks the nutrients out of the plant, and that's why it is a parasite off of the plant. Now I am still learning, but daughter is not common around here. Once I saw what it was and I was like, yes, that is what I have. I was talking to my mama, who you know is a great gardener, many, many years experience. She's also a master gardener, takes tons of classes all the time. She had never heard of daughter before. During research, I understand that it's really common in California, big, huge problem. Um, so I am still researching on exactly <laughs> how to handle this. Um, I do know that what I will do is I am going to harvest this whole bed and t get my carrots out, but all of my foliage I am going to bag up and I am going to put in the dumpster because this produces tons of seeds and it will have seeds in this bed for many, many years. Interestingly enough, this half of the bed is the only place I have it. I have nowhere else on the property. So I think it came in from seeds that I had purchased, so vegetable seeds. It's very interesting because looking back, I had it last year. I didn't know what it was. I may have even had it the year before, but it's always been contained to this bed. So I will take all this foliage out, bag it up and toss it. Once I make a really plan for a long term, I will share that with you. But if you um, are like me and you've never heard of daughter, this is what it is. It is a problem because it does produce lots of seeds and they can lay dormant for years and years and years. So this is a fun little problem that Jenny has that she has to uh, figure out and take care of. But you know what? That's gardening. We're always constantly learning new things and experiencing new things. That is gardening. Um, so again, thank you. Uh, this whole area, we will keep you updated on this space. The hydrangeas are getting ready to bloom back there in the back. That is the uh, fire lights. They are popping with some blooms. And then down below are the little limes that again will be exploding with color. Lots of things still to do in here. Gardening is a continual thing, but hopefully you have um, maybe learned some new things, found some new plants, um, and enjoy this little bit of our cottage garden tour. As always, thank you so much for gardening with Creekside. Thank you for looking out for me with the daughter in the horn rooms. I so appreciate it. Y'all are the best. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.